Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and lesson 18 is some poetry about the actions I've taken as a banking systems engineer to fix the world system. So, actions of the banking systems engineer. As banking systems engineer, I claimed authority and swore to fix the banking system expeditiously. 1979, not so expeditious. The logical reaction was to tell my parliament. So off I went to House of Commons, tried to make a dent. My presentations noted, filed, were very soon forgot. So running in each every race was duty that I thought. The 1997 Guinness Book of Records, World, said 41 elections on our banner is unfurled. You can see that page if you go to my website, termelpress.com slash Guinness97.htm, G-U-I-N-N-97.htm, and I'm up to 68 elections now in almost 30 years. Law. A hundred times I sought injunctions. Six, right to the top, Supreme Court. In each I sought the order that the interest they stop. The Interest Act says that you may take most any rate, unless another law against it can be found to state. The laws I found were out of Canada's criminal code. Some laws to fight the mortgage off. It was the legal road. Mort is the section of the mortgage which eliminates and causes death by poverty, which seals so many fates. The section 318 says proofs of genocides derive, quote, inflicting on the group conditions where all can't survive, unquote. When we see the foreclosures on our farm capacity, we know there'll be less food produced. It is a certainty. And since starvation still exists in many a foreign land, there'll be starvation even more for mankind to withstand. Gosh, is the section of the mortgage which is vulnerable to gambling sections of the code which are invincible. The section 1971B3 mandates no fee. Quote, participation in a gamble must be made for free. Participating in the mortgage has an interest fee, so fee charged for a mortgage is a criminality. Another code of laws that we must take into account, the laws contained within the Bible must be paramount. And finally, the science warns, the deadline's getting near, this is a case of life and death that you should really fear. I argued that foreclosures kept our, li kept our life support less strong. They had the power to put right the program that's gone wrong. The statement sent to me by banks and credit cards provide for interest and service fees, both listed side by side. We could restrict the program to collect the service charge, enough to pay the bankers for the service they discharge. So with those laws, I ask the courts to overrule the act, abolish interest, and make the service charges fat. Equation of Responsibility I pointed out that they had the might to instantaneously effect repair on our industrial capacity. It's just like a conveyor belt with people in a line who fall into abyss of Luciferian design. If you could press a button and cut power to the beast, the belt would have momentum, but you'd lose the very least. With the production maximized of butter, not of guns, we still could not get there in time for all the weakest ones. So there would be a finite loss of souls until the day when all may access credit and for life support may pay. But if you'd waited for a while before you used your might, you'd lose some extra souls for failing to so expedite. And if you had refused to press the button to this day, it would on you the blame for every fallen soul we lay. With simple mathematics, we can count the number who have perished by inaction of men with the, the men with power, you. The number of souls perishing, all due to the delay, is equal to the number who do perish on that day. This is 1990. With 40,000 children dying every single day, 
responsibility belongs to those who had the say. Since all the judges had the power to compel the banks to fix the killer program so they don't deserve our thanks. The number they must answer for, which day to day does climb, is equal to the number who have perished since that time. Each motion was a shot on goal, a chance to fix the flaw. I took as many as I could, but interest is law. Not judges responsible. Six times I went to the top and all to no avail, since they found it too hard to grasp. The motions all did fail. The judges all ruled that they'd failed to see what they could do. They could not change the software to the service charges few. And though I tried a hundred times to get the software switched, the banking system seems to have the judges all bewitched. I honestly believe their rulings did not pass the test, because there seems to be a real conflict of interest. The judges may be prejudiced for they too are in hawk. Or judges may be prejudiced by owning banking stock. Rewrite the banking software and give bailiffs all a rest. For maximum production, please abolish interest. So 40,000 dead babies a day. That's a lot of dead babies, around 15 million a year. So when, for instance, Chief Justice Lamer, who just recently uh, went out, Way back 25, 30 years ago, he had the chance to restrict the bank's computers to a pure service charge. All these judges did. And that would have allowed the Canadian banking system around the world to lend credits based on collateral, interest-free, small service charge. And that would have probably saved the planet 25 years ago. So therefore, all those people who starved in the last 25 years for nothing, when they could have all survived, they're in heaven waiting for a chance to beat on these judges when they try to get in. Good for them. That's what I want heaven to be, where the judges who could have saved those souls have to face them. Defense from the parable of talents. So I defended victims too, those being repossessed. I showed them what to do and how to fight the banks with zest. Jean Metcalf cared for some retarded women over years. Struck down with allergies, she had a mortgage in her ears. The bank had moved to repossess and push her from her home. When she cried out, no one could help. It was a valid loan. She used to be a heavy one, 245. I met her weighing 95. She barely was alive. I showed her how to play the game, their watches and her dimes. She practiced how to repossess their watches many times. With knowledge of this, she did plead her case right to the top. She said eviction into hostile world would have to stop. Uh, the house she lived in was her shield environmentally. She had nowhere to go. It was deadly, certainly. By using the defense provided in Christ's parable, reputing interest but paying principal, so when a bank said our home had to be repossessed, defendants offered principal, but not the interest. The banks would make a motion to defense disqualify and argue that the Bible and the science don't apply. The courts would rule that they could not see what it was about. Disqualifying each defense, they ordered families out. The law provided for the time to serve and file appeal before the bankers could move in and finish off the steal. But just before the deadline, we would file our document. They'd move and get dismissal, but more time they would have spent. And then we would appeal again and they'd reciprocate. Appellate courts would not our argument accommodate. To Canada's Supreme Court was the last stop on the road. They also had no pity for the needy, and it showed. The process took a year, but the Supreme Court did decide. The bank has right to your home, lady, and you can't reside. The sheriff and his deputies came by one winter's day and put her out onto the street, the banks you always pay. She spent a month outdoors in our severe Canadian climes. It was a shame to see her suffer, proof of worst of crimes. A kindly doctor bought her house and let her move back in. She did survive her big ordeal, but she was oh so thin. It was so easy to impede the banks with their own laws. When simple piece of paper made them sheath their claws. Because it took time to dismiss all of our documents, defendants got to live for free while we made arguments. And though evicted, finally, with time they'd saved a bit. And having ta cash to help start over was the benefit. And, of course, my most famous Stiff the Bank adventure was the Woodhouse family in Toronto. And I kept that family in the house for almost three years. 33 months. 
I kept that family in the house. You know, the family who'd lost her son in a railroad accident and went broke with lawyers suing and then had to get evicted. Well, I kept them in their house. Oh, there it is. For an extra, and the Toronto Stars, that's the big eviction, three, almost three years later. So the Stiff the Bank kits worked and people did their own fighting and that's where I got the reputation for being the bank fighter extraordinaire in the Metcalf case. That's what the editor called me. John Turmel, bank fighter extraordinaire.